Welcome to my channel, Z Bakeries, where I show you how to create beautiful decorated cakes and cupcakes. So I'm going to get into the video right away. Over here, I have six chocolate cupcakes. And um, you can see that I actually didn't fill the batter of these cupcakes too much because I wanted them to be a little bit lower than the cupcake liner. Some of the cupcakes have domed up slightly since some of the cupcakes had a little bit more batter. So we're just going to cut off the top of all of these cupcakes just so we have a nice flat surface to work with. So um, you can see if I angle my cupcake, you can see that it doesn't need too much cutting since it is kind of low. So using a knife, you're just going to hold the um, bottom of the cupcake and then using a knife, uh, wiggle it back and forth and just cut off the dome of the cupcakes. We're going to repeat this, res this process on all of the cupcakes. And you want to be a little bit delicate so you don't um, ruin the cupcake liners when you are um, holding it. Once all of the domes have been cut off, you'll notice that some of the areas are going to be slightly unleveled, so just try to make sure that they're nice and even the best you can. Over here, I have some American buttercream, and to this, I've already added in some white gel food coloring. So over here, I am using um, gel food coloring by Chef Master. I do get asked a lot what type of food coloring to use, and it would be gel-based food coloring. Um, and this doesn't change the texture or the consistency of your buttercream. You're also going to need a tapered spatula. You can see it has a little bit of an angle, and this is just going to make it easier when applying your buttercream. So you just want to um, take some of that buttercream, and what you want to do is you want to move it back and forth. Um, and cover the complete surface of your cupcake liner. You don't want to pull back, otherwise that's going to cause it to have some sort of, of those crumbs in your buttercream. So you just want to move it back and forth slightly and then um, fill it up. And you can see the cupcake liner um, on the edges is going to give a nice, beautiful design to the surface of our cupcakes as well. So once you filled it up and you have um, a nice smooth surface, we're just going to basically repeat this process with all of the other cupcakes. So you can see it's nice and smooth and nice and leveled. Now I'm just going to repeat this process with all of the cupcakes, just taking a little bit at a time and then smoothing off the top. So it's not super um, complicated, super simple and easy. And it's also just the perfect amount of frosting for the cake layers as well. So now I'm going to repeat this process with all of the cupcakes. So add a little bit of that buttercream, move it back and forth and just smooth it off. So again, create that back and forth motion, then smooth off the top. And the edges of the cupcake liners will help you get that smooth surface on your cupcakes. Once all of the cupcakes have been nice and smooth on the top with buttercream, at this point I have two bowls with American buttercream, as well as two colors that I'm going to show you. One of them is Leaf Green by Chef Master. And the second color I'm showing you is a Lemon Yellow by Chef Master as well. So I'm going to add in one drop of gel food coloring in both of these bowls. You want to make sure that you add one drop, not too much. And if you want to be more precise, you can also use a toothpick that just gives you more control. And in one of the bowl, I'm adding in some yellow gel food coloring because I am creating the green for the leaves for the buttercream. So I want to have two different types of shades. So you just want to give your buttercream a nice mix. This is also a very crucial part in getting rid of any air bubbles while you are also creating colors. So if you have too many air bubbles in your buttercream, you just want to scrape your buttercream against the side of the bowl and that will get rid of it. So I found that green to be a little bit too light, so I'm adding in another drop of the green gel food coloring. And I do want to show you the process that it doesn't have to happen right away. You're supposed to slowly build your color, so if you notice that it's too light, you can add a little bit more, make it more vibrant. At this point, I am going to add in another shade um, into this buttercream, and that's going to be brown. So I'm adding in one drop of brown gel-based food coloring. This is referred to as the Buckeye Brown by Chef Master. And I'm adding this brown to give the green a little bit more of a realistic look. I've noticed that whenever you do add that brown shade, it doesn't make it brown all of a sudden. It just gives that leaf a little bit more of a realistic shade to it. So you want to slowly build your color and you don't have to go with the first color that you make. You slowly want to um, build on it and add a little bit of different colors and shades to it to make it more realistic. So you can see that I'm still not happy with the color that I'm going for. So I'm adding in another drop, drop of green gel food coloring just to make it a little bit more um, darker in color. 
and that's pretty much as you um, mix more and try mixing more and more colors you'll start to notice that's basically how you build a color you basically just keep adding in more colors to it until you're happy with the final color now I'm mixing the other bowl of the food coloring that I had with the green and yellow and it was equal parts of both green and yellow and at this point I'm happy with how the green looks but I'm going to still add one drop of that brown gel food coloring into this as well and as I mentioned I just like to add the brown just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look and because my other um, leaf green shade also has a little bit of brown, I feel like both of them will complement one another as well. So it won't turn your um, green all of a sudden into a muddy brown color. It's just going to add a little bit of a realistic look to your leaves. So once everything is nice and well combined, both the green shades are exactly how I'm what I want. I'm going to be creating vines and leaves with these buttercream shades. Now I'm just going to fill these buttercreams into a piping bag. So over here I have a disposable piping bag as well as a coupler. A coupler basically just allows you to change your piping tip without having to constantly change the color of your buttercream and your piping bag. So it just makes the process a lot easier so you can switch your piping tip and use the same color. So I'm just going to open my piping bag and drop in the first part of the coupler and just push that all the way through. Then using some scissors, you want to mark um, the part where you want to cut from. You want to make sure that it is enough so that when you put your piping tip on top, none of the first part of your coupler is covered with the plastic. Then you want to push your coupler forward. So once you've added the coupler inside of your piping bag, you want to unfold the edges of your piping bag and cup that around your hand. And that's just going to make the process of adding your buttercream into the piping bag a lot more cleaner and easier. So I'm starting off with the lighter shade, but we're going to repeat the same process with all of the other um, buttercreams that we're using as well. So you then you just want to push your buttercream forward and you're going to repeat this with all of the other shades. So all the cupcakes uh, are ready and assembled to go and over here I have the light buttercream shade, one that I've mixed to dig together and then the darker shade of buttercream as well as some of the piping tips I'm going to be using. So I have two piping tips which are the tip 2 and I have two piping tips which are tip 3 which are both round tips. So I'm going to start off by showing the Wilton tip number 3 which is a small round tip. This is going to be slightly bigger than the Wilton tip number 2 which is the other option that I'm going to be using as well. And this is slightly smaller um, compared to the Wilton tip number 3. The other piping tip that I might also be using is the Wilton tip number 102 which is a small petal tip. So um, I actually had this out, but I'm not going to be using this for any of the flowers, but it was definitely an, on op an option I had in mind, as well as the Wilton tip number 18, which is a small open star tip. So you can see that it is going to create a lot of the rosettes as well as the flowers that I'm going to be using for these cupcakes. And it's an open star tip. So now I'm going to start off by showing you um, how I'm going to be creating the vines for these leaves and why the process of decorating these cupcakes together is a lot more smoother and easier. So I'm going to start off by taking the darker green buttercream shade that we created earlier in this video and I'm going to take the smaller tip which is the Wilton tip number two and you want to just place that carefully in front of the coupler and then taking that extra um, coupler piece that they given you're just going to twist that on and that's just going to make sure that the piping tip is nice and secured in place now. Now I'm going to use this piping tip to create a vine going through all of these uh, cupcakes. This is basically the process that's going to give a distinct and unique look to each of these cupcakes while also making the process of decorating all of these cupcakes a lot more easier since we're creating them all at once and each of the cupcakes design will be completely different and unique. So this is definitely something new that I thought I would come up with, especially since for beginners I feel like it's a lot more easier. So with a steady hand, just start creating the vines and you can see I'm starting high on one of the cupcakes, I'm going completely lower on the other one, then kind of going in the center for the third cupcake, going lower, keeping that in mind, then going high and then going in the center kind of medium to low. So you can see that each of the vine is completely different on all of these cupcakes. This is going to give each cupcake a completely different look and unique design. Now I'm taking the lighter um, buttercream and I'm going to be adding as well a Wilton tip number two, securing that piping tip on top nicely. 
And now I'm going to be creating a few vines coming out from within that dark green branch that we created earlier. And again, same process, you just want to, with a steady hand, just create a few extra branches and just not overthinking the process, kind of freely just seeing wherever you want, you kind of create smaller branches, wherever you want, you want to create longer branches and just kind of have um, a lot more freedom with the style you're going for. You don't want to overthink the process and just have fun with it. So you can see I'm creating slightly smaller um, vines coming out of the darker vine. And some of them are going to be longer than others. And it's okay if any of the vines break, just go back and fill that in. So again, very carefully create those lines within the dark branch that we created earlier. And you can already start to notice that each of the cupcake design will be completely different and it's a lot more easier and quicker to decorate this way as well especially if you're a new um, decorator new at decorating a lot more easier and fun so now that we've created the vines on all of the cupcakes so now taking the dark green buttercream shade which has the wilton tip number two we're going to be creating leaves on all of the vines so i'm going to um you know create these leaves from the very first cupcake and I'm going to follow the dark green vine and you want to continue this all the way to the last so to create the leaves you want to add pressure and then pull upwards and then you're going to create the leaves across from one another um, rotating on one side of the vine then the opposite side of the vine and each time you create a leaf you want to add pressure and then pull upwards as you create the leaves, you'll notice that the process becomes a lot more smoother and easier. And you also want to make sure that you're using the other hand to give you more support so you have a nice steady hand. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm adding pressure and then pulling upwards, then going on the opposite side of the vine, adding pressure and pulling upwards to create these leaves. So it's a super simple and easy design, um, very easy, especially if you are a uh, new to cake decorating I feel like this style of cupcake decorating is actually very easy very simple and will also get you a lot more control um, on how to pipe using these piping bags and getting a lot more control with decorating as well so definitely give this style of cupcake decorating a try and it's also a lot easier since all of the cupcakes are next to one another so the process of decorating also becomes a lot easier as well so also if you guys are enjoying this type of video tutorial definitely uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel since i upload a new video each week i have been a little bit um, slow lately since my brother was getting married so i was really busy but now i'm back to decorating and i can't wait to share more of, of what i love with all of you guys so now that i've created the leaves on the dark green vines now I'm going to repeat the same process again with the light green um, buttercream shade that I've created and this also has a Wilton tip number two. We're going to repeat the same process by adding the light green buttercream shades following the light green um, vines that we've created. So again, same process, add pressure and then you want to pull upwards and then you want to do that on the opposite side and you want to keep creating those beautiful consistent leaves all the way through. And what I absolutely love about this design is that you're going to get a completely different look to each of your cupcake, even though you are decorating them all at once. So once we are going to pull these cupcakes apart, you're going to have a completely unique and different look to each and every one of these cupcakes. But it was super simple and easy to make since we decorated them all together at once. Also, if you have any specific um, decorating ideas you guys would like to see from me, um, I would be more than happy to create that so definitely leave that in the comment section down below and I love hearing your suggestions so now I'm creating that with the two toned colors that I created so I just mixed both the light green and the dark green buttercream into this piping bag and now I'm just I left a few of the light green vines empty and I'm just creating that same pattern to create the leaves with those just to create a little bit more realistic look to the vines by having a dark green, a light green, and a mixed two-toned buttercream colored leaves as well. You can always go back and add more vines and leaves just like I did here as well. But I'm really happy with how the uh, branches, um, how the leaves look on each of the cupcake. So now that I've created the leaves, I'm going to create um, the flowers that I'm going to go for. And I have two bowls of buttercream. 
and I'm going to be adding in these gel food colorings into these bowls so in one of them I'm going to be adding in this deep pink gel food coloring and this is also by chef master so you just want to add in one drop and in the other bowl I'm going to be adding in one drop of this fuchsia gel food coloring which is also by chef master and when I added this in, I ended up adding in too much. So it is always best to use a toothpick since you will end up having more control. But I just took some of that gel food coloring out and I placed it into a separate bowl just in case I end up needing more of that gel food coloring. So that is perfectly fine if that happens, just put it into a separate bowl. So now I'm just going to mix the um, buttercream that had the light pink gel food coloring in it. And I find that it's a bit, a bit too light, so I'm going to add in another drop of that pink gel food coloring into the buttercream and just continue to give that a mix until the color is nice and well incorporated into the buttercream. So at this point, I am pretty happy with how this pink looks like. Uh, so I'm going to start mixing the other bowl of buttercream with the fuchsia gel food coloring inside of it. So you just want to give everything a nice mix. And I want um, both the colors to complement one another, but I want one of them to still be a little bit darker. So you remember that gel food coloring that I had, I'm adding a little bit more into the bowl because I wanted the shade to be a little bit more um, darker in color. So now that both of the colors are side by side, I feel that the light pink, um, I'm going to add in one more drop of gel food coloring just to make it a little bit more darker um, since I felt like it was a little bit too pale. So you just want to add that in and give everything a nice mix until everything is well combined. So at this point, I do like that the pink is a little bit more vibrant in color next to the fuchsia shade. Now I'm going to be creating flowers using both of these colors. So I'm just going to um, place both of these colors into a piping bag. And I've added a piping tip to both of them. So over here, I have the fuchsia buttercream that I've placed into a piping bag. And this is the Wilton tip number 18, which was the small open star tip. So at this point, I'm going to show you how to create small little rosettes on all of these cupcakes. So you want to use the palm of your other hand to give you a steady hand while you are creating the rosettes. And I'm going to add a couple here and there on each of the vines just to make it look like a real rose is blooming. So when you're creating these rosettes, what you do is you want to add pressure, go counterclockwise, and then you want to release. And I'm roughly adding about two to three rosettes on both of the cupcakes. So you can see I had some of that buttercream on the tip of my piping bag. Make sure to keep cleaning that off so it doesn't ruin your rosettes when you are piping. So I'm so sorry I didn't realize that my camera was out of focus. So um, once I do realize that, I will show you a little bit more in close up of exactly how I'm creating these rosettes. So you can see I'm adding pressure, I go counterclockwise and then I release. So again, add pressure, go counterclockwise and release. And you want to do this um, across here and there just to make it look like a real rosette. So I've added about three rosettes on each cupcake and I feel like it just makes it look a lot more natural, realistic and elegant. Now taking the light pink buttercream shade with the Wilton tip number two, I'm going to be creating small little bud flowers. So what you want to do is you want to just create little dots and then kind of make them like they're pointing. Um, so have a larger base and then kind of uh, one um, dot to the very top. So kind of going like a cone shape. You want to keep doing this um, wherever you feel like the uh, vine ended. I just feel like it created a lot more of a realistic um, look to the cupcakes. So you can see I'm adding little dots and then as I get to the tip, I'm just going to have one. So kind of in the shape of a cone. And you don't have to stress over how you're making it. All you want to do is create small little dots and kind of have one small dot at the very end of your, um, you know, flower. And you can go back and add in more wherever you feel like you want to. Once you've created the roses and the small little flower buds, at this point, I'm going, you could leave it just like this. And, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the gaps with some writing or some sort of message. Since these are more like a wedding cupcake design, I'm going to write um, on the tops wherever the gaps are. So I'm going to you do that with black buttercream. So you want to start off with a base of brown buttercream. So over here I have some chocolate buttercream and I'm going to be adding in some black gel food coloring. So this is a very important tip. Um, because you're starting off with a darker base, you won't have to end up using too much of your black food coloring. So I'm going to start off with chocolate buttercream and add in a few drops of 
this black gel food coloring by chef master so i believe this was known as black diamond and you just want to add in that into your buttercream and then give everything a nice mix Once it is nice and well mixed, you can see that it kind of has a little bit of a gray uh, hue to it. So I will end up adding in a little bit more of that black gel food coloring into the buttercream. And that's just so that I have a very dark, rich um, black buttercream shade. So again, just add in another drop. And then to continue to give everything a nice mix until the gel food coloring is well combined. So just definitely keep that tip in mind. Starting off with a darker base color, you'll have to end up using less of that black gel food coloring and you'll end up with a very dark black buttercream. Now that we've created the black buttercream, I'm going to fill that in with a pipe and fill that into a piping bag so I can start um, writing messages on these cupcakes. So once I've put that into a piping bag, I'm going to start off by actually um, kind of engraving it with a toothpick just so that I have a guide to follow so since I'm doing it more like a wedding cupcake style I'm writing love with a toothpick so you want to kind of um, you could use a template on the side to give you a guide while you are trying to freehand it on top but it's just better to have this guide I've done that on all of the cupcakes now taking the piping bag that has a Wilton tip number two I'm just going to follow the um, guideline that I've created so I've written love here so make sure you are using the other hand as a support when you are writing. It'll just make the process easier. I've decided to write love, thank you, and the date. But it is completely optional. You could write the name of the couple or you can, you can have the couple's initial. Um, and if you don't want to go with the wedding theme, you can definitely um, just keep it as like, you know, if it's just a party kind of thing, you can just have like... Uh, you know simple messages like sweet or you know if it's for a birthday you can um, you know have HBD or the age um, that they're turning so pretty much you can customize the writing to whatever you are um, hosting these cupcakes for or whatever you want these cupcakes to be or if you want you can completely have no messages at all and keep it nice and simple with just the vines and the flowers and that would also be very beautiful as well so there's a lot you can do with this design and style but you can see that I love how the vines are completely different, giving a completely different look to each and every one of these cupcakes. Um, so I've ended up writing all the messages and I've written um, each of the three types of messages two times. So you can see love, thank you, and the date I've added in two, two times. But what I love with these cupcakes is that once you pull these cupcakes apart, you have a completely unique and different design to each and every one of these cupcakes. And it looks like you put in a lot of effort, but it was pretty much just creating, placing all the cupcakes together and then kind of piping the designs wherever you want it. But each and every one of these cupcakes will be completely unique and different. And that's what I absolutely love. And it's um, something very different compared to the normal cupcake decorating that you normally see. I find that this process is a lot easier, especially if you're new to cake decorating. So when I was coming up with this design, I was thinking about something that would be simple for all of you guys to decorate. And I hope you guys do find this as a helpful um, and different technique to decorating your cupcakes. And if you do end up recreating this, please tag me on my social media on Instagram, um, Z Bakeries. And I love seeing your recreations and I would love to share that on my stories as well. But I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and I hope to see you guys in my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video.